the heart of the contrite. Good morning and welcome to morning prayer here this first week after the Feast of Pentecost. I'm uh, from St. Christopher's, although I'm not at St. Christopher's at the moment. I'm in a cabin up north uh, looking out at a very uh, spring kind of uh, cool day. Please join us with using our Book of Common Prayer for worship this morning. We'll use uh, Rite 2 of Morning Prayer beginning on page 79. And today is the Feast of St. Augustine of Canterbury, who was the first Archbishop of Canterbury. And so we're going to focus a little bit on him today. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him in the words of the Pascha Nostrum on page 83. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Today's psalm is Psalm number 66, which is also referred to as the Jubilate that we often use in the course of morning prayer. And this is the psalm that is appointed for this feast of St. Augustine, Canterbury. We'll say the psalm responsively, and I'll start with the first verse. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God, how wonderful he is in his doing toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land so that they went through the water on foot. And there we rejoiced in him. In his might, he rules forever. <laughs> His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. 
I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, for you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading appointed for this feast day is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, in the fifth chapter, beginning in the 17th verse. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespass against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteous of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's canticle is the uh, You Are God, number 21, on page 95 of the prayer book. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to Luke, in the fifth chapter, beginning the first verse. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him, to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but we've caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. 
So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. <clears throat> and they came and filled both boats. So they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had bought, brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Augustine of Canterbury was a... Uh, had a fascinating role in history. Not only was he the first Archbishop of Canterbury, which is, of course, really important to us, being, being an English derivative church, the Episcopal Church, and part of the worldwide Anglican communion. But this was a really important formative time in the early church. This was the early sixth century. And I want to read a little bit about um, Augustine of Canterbury here, and this is just strictly out, straight out of Wikipedia, nothing fancy. It says that he was a monk who became the first Archbishop of Canterbury in the year 597. He's considered the apostle to the English and a founder of the English church. Augustine was the prior of a monastery in Rome when Pope Gregory the Great chose him in 595 to lead a mission, usually known as the Gregorian mission to Britain to Christianize the king and his kingdom of Kent from Anglo-Saxon paganism. Kent was probably chosen because the king had married a Christian princess, Bertha, daughter of Cheribert I and the king of Paris, who was expected to exert some influence over her husband. Before reaching Kent, the missionaries had considered turning back, but Gregory urged them on. And in 597, Augustine landed in, on the Isle of Thanet and proceeded at the king's main town of Canterbury. I think the key part of that phrase is when the, uh, when the missionaries had considered turning back, that Gregory urged them on. The gospel according to Luke, Luke today speaks of a kind of a magnificent sign where the fishermen had spent all day basically catching nothing. Uh, I know a little bit about that myself. I'm a, a fisherman and I uh, quite often go out and end up coming back catching nothing. It can be demoralizing. It can be kind of um, sad. And Jesus, it, it, I think that the emphasis can, so often can be that there was this miracle that uh, they threw in the nets and Jesus made the fish show up. But in really carefully reading it, we really understand more that Jesus urged them on. He just simply said, just lower the nets, lower the nets. And lo and behold, the fish came and in greater numbers than was expected. This is so often the case when we're working with the, the notion of evangelism. You must uh, just only imagine in the sixth century when the land was basically full of pagans, and pagans meaning that they really were worshiping gods of convenience. They were worshiping gods that they felt would help them. It was really truly self-centric, that this god would do this for me and this god would do that for me. But none of those gods really urged those people on. That's what really makes following Jesus Christ much different than that, is that Jesus is there to urge us on to goodness, to urge us on away from this notion of scarcity into a land of abundance. And when he says to them, from now on, you will be catching people, that that is a very special urging on to say, you're there to bring hope to them and to bring it in an abundance, not in the scarcity that they might have. Because you see, when we have gods of convenience, when we have gods that really are tailored to deliver something to us, then inevitably those gods fail because ultimately we don't get everything that we want. That can be just as dejecting as any day going out and going fishing and coming back with nothing. The special thing about the message that Augustine of Canterbury brought to the people of England and pressed on even when the missionaries were basically saying, 
oh, this is not worth it, is to say, no, you, you can embrace this God of hope, that this is a God of total reconciliation, of total redemption, salvation, that there's life even beyond what we can do here, whether we're fishing or doing anything else. It is truly an important part of our life as Christians is to carry that message to people that may be bereft of hope, that may be struggling to understand why whatever we label as gods, even in our own day, fail us. Paganism is certainly truly alive in that regard. We have all kinds of gods, including money and other things, power, you know, political persuasion, whatever it may be, a long list. In the end, just like the pagan gods of the sixth century, it's only a matter of time before those fail us. But Jesus fail us never. The Holy Spirit, this beautiful gift that we celebrated on Sunday from Christ Jesus to us to be our advocate each day as we go forward, is an advocate there not to give us everything that we want, but to urge us on, to keep this urging us on until one day we become part of the cloud of witness that it's St. Augustine and so many are a part of. I ask you to join with me in affirming our faith in a loving God with the Apostles' Creed found on page 96 of the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from all evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, our God, who by your son, Jesus Christ, called your servant, Augustine, to preach the gospel to the English people, we pray that all whom you call and send may do your will, bide your time, and see your glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. I invite your prayers and intercessions this day ask your prayers especially for the family of D. Lee, a very, very long time member and very devoted soul of St. Christopher's, who passed away 
a week ago. Please lift them up, comfort them, and guide them in their sorrow. Even as D enjoys the closest presence of Christ. We pray today for Mike, Tom, Jan, Katie, David, Jane, Jeffrey, and Fontaine, Sandra, Lee, Jesse, Mary, Kathy, Desi, Tom and Anna, Jeff, Joy, Lisa, Diane, Brian, Missy, Claire, Dottie, Dennis, Therese, John, Bill, Patty, Grant, Dave, Bud, Nancy, Anna, Janie, Tony, Naomi, Nick, George, Linda, Jim, Marilyn, Finley, Linda, Gus, Mary, Andy, Craig, Lynn, Jane, Sonny, Sandy, Andy, Bobby and Patty, Blair, Stacy, Bobby, David, Caroline, Catherine, Carl, Chris, Virginia, Pat, and Cooper. I ask your prayers for those who continue around the world suffering in coronavirus, with coronavirus, uh, even as our country is increasing in vaccinations and embracing the hope of an ebbing pandemic. Be with those that would distribute vaccines across the world, help those across the world care for others with treatments, mitigation, that we all may as one people see this time through. We pray for those who suffer from other ailments and those who continue to heal from their own ailments, including Nels and Jenny, Michael, Peyton. I pray for Kathy, Kwame, Kaya, and Khalees. Pray for Hazel, Richard, Maida, Mary, Jean, Jennifer, Joyce, Ken, and Sue. And pray for peaceful repose for those who have gone before us, Larry, Doreen, Nance, Kathy, Ann, Sue, Bob, Ken, Leon, Nancy, Vaughn, Seal, Florence, Marianne, Remy, Cy, Betsy, Joe Dan, Andre, Rosemary, Sutton, Robbie, Catherine, Richard, Beth, and Dick. If you have people that you would like us to pray for, please contact our church office, email us, or contact us through Facebook and let us know. We will continue to lift up prayers for them. Ask special prayers today for the loss of life recently of David. It happens to be related to our family. We pray for his son and daughter and for all of the family as they mourn this loss and prepare to commit his remains to the ground here this coming weekend. Bless them and keep them. We'll close today with general thanksgiving on page 101 of the prayer book. Mighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies 
that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through jesus christ our lord to whom with you and the holy spirit the honor and glory throughout all ages amen almighty god you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. With that, I bid you a blessed week, bid you a blessed beginning of a new season here in the summer of 2021. Join us for worship on Sunday. We are worshiping in person at both 8 and 10 at St. Christopher's, and we do continue to live stream the 10 a.m. service. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.